Hi, this is Dr. O'Connor. Welcome to Pathways to Chemistry. Today we're going to talk about how to write and how to balance a chemical equation. And when I say write a chemical equation, a chemical equation is full of information. It tells us both the uh, reactants, the phase of the reactants, and the products and the phase of the products. So you want to learn how to start putting chemical equations into words because again you can get a lot of information from that chemical equation. Before we start we have this equation here. We have solid nickel reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce aqueous nickel chloride and hydrogen gas. So notice these labels in parentheses that tells us the phase of the reactant or the product. So for a gas we'll always see a lowercase g in parentheses, a liquid, a lowercase l, a solid, a lowercase s, and for aqueous, a q in parentheses. So what do we mean by aqueous? What we mean is that the substance is dissolved in water. So here we have nickel chloride aqueous. So aqueous nickel chloride. That means that nickel chloride salt is dissolved in water. We have solid nickel reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce aqueous nickel chloride and hydrogen gas. So let's go ahead and practice how to write some of these equations. So in this first problem, it states that in an electrolysis reaction, liquid water is decomposed to hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So when we talk about decomposition, we usually have a substance that is broken down into two or more substances. All we're interested in here are the reactants and the products so we can write our chemical equation. So we're told that liquid water decomposes. So I'm going to go ahead and write the chemical formula for water and this is liquid, so I'll put the phase label liquid here. So that's the only reactant because we're told that it's decomposing into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Remember, hydrogen and oxygen both exist as diatomic molecules. So now I have my chemical equation. We have to check to see if it is balanced. We can look at each atom and I always leave oxygen until last and you'll see as we get into this why I do that. So on this side I have two hydrogens and on this side I have two hydrogen atoms. So we're good. And on the reactant side I have one oxygen but on the product side, I have two oxygen atoms, so I have to balance for oxygen. The only way that you can balance is to use coefficients. You put the coefficient in front of the substance. Do not change subscripts. If you change a subscript, then you have changed the formula. We have a different compound. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 2 in front of the water. So now what I have is, let me erase these and then we can do another count of the atoms. And now what I have is, I have two times two, that's four hydrogen atoms. Uh, the coefficients multiply the subscripts here. Okay, so I have two times two, four hydrogen atoms, and I have two times one, two oxygen atoms. And on this side here, now I've still got two hydrogen atoms, but I do have two oxygen atoms, so we are balanced for oxygen. So what I can do is put a two in front of the hydrogen, and now we are balanced for the hydrogen. Um, up here I shouldn't have put this two, okay, because we're just looking at individual atoms. So I have four hydrogens on this side, four hydrogens on the product side, two oxygens on the reactant side, 
and two oxygens on the product side, this is a balanced chemical equation. So for the next problem here, I'm told that a yellow solid called lead to iodide is formed when we mix aqueous solutions of potassium iodide and lead to nitrate. So in this case, my product is the lead to iodide. Another product we have that I didn't write here, I meant to put that in the problem, but that's okay, aqueous potassium nitrate. We start off then with the potassium iodide and we're told that's dissolved in water so we put the aqueous label there and lead to nitrate so you have to know how to write your formulas so that's important so lead to nitrate and again that's aqueous and then we're told that a solid of lead to iodide is produced and also aqueous potassium nitrate. What I'm going to do here is let me rewrite the equation a little smaller so you can see the whole thing. Nitrate. So let's see if this equation is balanced. I have one, one potassium here and I have one iodide. Here I have one lead atom. Now, what I can do here is, notice we have this nitrate, and we also have nitrate on this side. I can do either balance each atom, or I can balance it as a unit, as the polyatomic ion. So I'm gonna do it that way. So here I have two nitrate, two nitrates. Okay, let's go to this side. I have one lead. Here I have two of two atoms of iodine. I have one potassium atom and I have one nitrate unit. We're not balanced for nitrate or the iodine. We have two iodines here, one on this side. I'll put a two in front of the potassium iodide. So now that is going to give us two potassium atoms, two iodine atoms. Okay, so we're good there. And then here, I've only got the one nitrate. So I'm gonna put a two in front of the potassium nitrate. So let's see, that'll give me, now I have two potassium atoms, two nitrate. So it looks like we have a balanced chemical equation. Always recheck. Two potassiums here, two potassiums here, two iodine atoms. Here I have two iodine atoms. One lead atom, one lead atom. Here I have two nitrates, and here I also have two nitrates. Remember that coefficient multiplies through. Okay. So let's do this third one. So let's see, this propane should be, it should be three carbons and eight hydrogens, okay? So propane, we all know what propane gas is. We uh, use that uh, to grill. And um, so we're, we're told here that if propane is burned in oxygen gas, and we're going to assume complete combustion here. If so, then water vapor and carbon dioxide are produced. We're told that propane, which is a gas, is burned in oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide gas and water vapor, so that would be gas. Okay, so I've written the equation from the information I'm given. The key is decide which is your product and which is your reactant. Okay, so now I have to balance. Again, I'm going to balance everything else first and leave the oxygens until last. So on this side here, I have three carbons. 
On this side, I have one carbon, so I'm going to put a 3 in front of the carbon dioxide. So now I have three carbons. There we go. Let's do the hydrogens next. So here I have eight hydrogens. And here I have two hydrogens. So I'm just going to put a four in front of the water, and that'll give me eight hydrogens. Now we'll count the oxygen atoms. Remember, I have molecular oxygen here. This is two oxygen atoms. On this side, I have three times two, six oxygen atoms plus four from the water. So that's a total of 10 oxygen atoms. In order to balance this, I can put a five in front of this oxygen. Five times two gives me 10 oxygen atoms. Okay, we can check now to make sure we're balanced. Three carbons, three carbons. Eight hydrogens, four times two, eight hydrogens. And then we have five times ten oxygens. And on this side, we have six oxygens plus four, ten oxygen atoms. So this is a balanced equation. I hope this helps. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.